Hey everyone, today we have a Kyra. Say hi. <laughs> that beautiful grin. I love you. Ah, and I have a dog. I haven't shown you for the world. Would I? No. <laughs> you just gonna perch that? Yeah, are you? You're gonna perch. Like a little bird. Okay, good girl. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are looking at a Reddit thread in which people ask doctors and genuine healthcare professionals what home remedy has a patient tried that backfired in the worst way possible. Go on then, down you go. <laughs> oh, she's the best home remedy for anything. So as some of you may know if you've been around for a while, since I started this channel I have spoken out about people using things like essential oils, uh, being anti-vaxxers, using all kinds of like pseudoscience, people who practice urine therapy, we'll talk about them in a minute, they, they got really really mad at me at the time and they are still mad today. I have kind of spoken out about these kind of alternative medicines since the very beginning. You know, I've also seen about two years ago now, I made this video on some of like the grossest kind of like medical cases from these really, really old medical journals, like kind of some of our earliest modern medical journals. Uh, that was actually a really interesting one. That might be worth doing another video on actually because I really enjoyed that and it was disgusting. I uh, just look up the video about the woman who cried pee. Genuinely, it was great. I'll, I'll link it below actually if you want to check it out. Um, so the point is, I am both fascinated and shocked by the lengths that people go to to avoid actual life-saving medical treatments. So this thread is right up my street and I figured we would look at it today and kind of discuss some of these points and just kind of have a bit of a cringe together, but also try and learn something along the way. So doctors have read it, what home remedy has a patient tried that backfired in the worst way possible? First up, we'll start with this one, which is kind of like revisiting an old series of videos from uh, the earlier days of my channel. This person says, had a patient doing urine therapy, which involved putting urine in her own eyes, came into the ER with severe conjunctivitis, I don't often have to consult ophthalmology, but I was genuinely concerned she'd permanently lose her vision. Your body gets rid of urine for a reason, people. Leave it out of your body where it belongs. <sighs> I, to this day, do not understand why this is such a controversial one, but for some reason it seems to be. One of the most disliked videos on my channel are the ones about urine therapy, because the people doing urine therapy got very, very mad at me for calling it out. I think I made my first video on it something like three years ago and then followed it up with the infamous pee drinkers response, which I know is a petty title but is quite funny and accurate. When basically I looked at a bunch of Facebook groups about people doing urine therapy and kind of spoke about what was happening to them and their experiences and kind of urine therapy as a whole. And then the people who were like actually doing urine therapy themselves got really, really mad at me for talking about it and telling other people not to do it. And to this day, I still get a lot of angry comments from people on those videos telling me how I'm an awful person and how I shouldn't be telling people not to drink their own pee until I've tried it myself. <laughs> Genuinely, they're like, how do you know urine therapy is bad if you've never done it? Which to me makes as much sense as saying to people, don't tell people not to shoot themselves in the head until you've tried it yourself, you might not die. You can know something is dangerous without ever actually having done it yourself. I know not to eat moldy food because it gives you food poisoning. I'm not gonna go out there and try every moldy food there is just to see if it gives me food poisoning or not. I already know it's bad. I'm not gonna shoot myself in the head because I know I'll die. I'm not gonna drink my own pee because I know it's bad for me. I will link those videos as well below if you wanna check them out for yourself, but the basic premise is some people believe you can use urine to cure pretty much everything and anything you can think of. So they drink it, they bathe in it, they rub it on their skin, they use it as eye drops. Some people even inject it, although that one is quite rare. I've seen stories of it happening. And this involves both fresh pee and aged urine, which is basically where they like pee in a jar and then just store it and then a few months later they do stuff with it. So some argue that like, oh, what's the problem? Urine sterile, it's a big argument I see, but that's not really the case. The urine itself might be sterile, but your urinary, urinary tract isn't, your genitals aren't. So especially when people store and age their urine, it becomes a perfect breeding ground for bacteria, which you're then putting back into your body. Not to mention the fact that your urine is full of waste products and by re-drinking it you're making your kidneys work even harder which over time can cause all kinds of damage and potentially kidney failure and it's just a bad idea. 
and that's only really the tip of the iceberg, you know, don't even get me started on injecting it. I read one story from a medical journal about a guy who, um, he literally had like necrotic flesh on his arm and he had all these like track marks and they thought he was doing drugs. Turns out he'd been injecting his own pee and it literally like got to the point where he needed his arm amputated. It was pretty messed up. It is literally as this Reddit poster says, your body gets rid of urine for a reason, leave it out of your body where it belongs. Comments on this post then went on to give some anecdotal examples of why else this can be bad. For example, I've read about a woman who didn't know she had gonorrhea and yes, she was rinsing her eyes with urine, wasn't good for them. And with that disturbing image in mind, let's move on to another post which disturbs me on a more personal level because it's about teeth and you all know I have issues with teeth. This person says, found a cavity in a little girl's tooth and rather than have it filled, mom tried to heal her kid's cavity with oil pulling. Kid came back for her six month checkup and mom expected me to see the cavity was healed because it had stopped hurting. She told the hygienist not to tell me because she wanted me to be surprised when I saw it. The cavity had grown so large, the tooth needed to be pulled. Massive, giant hole in it with tons of decay. You don't have to be a dentist to understand you were looking at a massive cavity. It had stopped hurting because the nerve had eventually died and was causing an asymptomatic infection. Poor kid. So as someone who has always had a lot of problems with their teeth and as someone who grew up in a family where like we couldn't afford to have any dental work done unless it was like really, really essential and the NHS covered it, I can kind of relate to this little girl and I feel so, so, so bad for her. I've had a lot of cavities over the years, I've had a lot of fillings and they're unpleasant but what's more unpleasant is just leaving them be and having constant toothache. Like, that is horrific. So what this mother was doing, doing is called oil pulling. And if you've never heard of this, it just basically means you get someone to swirl their mouth out with oil once or a couple of times a day. And the theory is that this will pull, I'm doing a lot of air quotes, sorry, uh, that this will pull all the bacteria out of the mouth. So you swirl the oil around, the oil picks up the bacteria and then you spit it out and it's all gone. It, uh, it's not this miracle cure that people make it out to be. In reality, there are a few studies that show that this act of swilling your mouth out with almost any liquid regularly can help slightly reduce the number of bacteria in there, but without proper good oral hygiene, it has a limited impact. And it's not so much the oil that's helping anything, it's just the act of swilling with liquid. So if you do the same thing with mouthwash, you'll have a similar but more improved effect. If you do the same with water, you'll also have a similar effect to the oil stuff. The biggest thing to remember though, is that it doesn't matter if this woman was swilling her kid's mouth out with oil or mouthwash or petrol. Once the cavity is there, you can't just say, I'll reduce the bacteria and ignore it and expect it to heal. From what I understand, teeth don't work like that and you have to see a dentist. Having a cavity that gets so bad, you actually get to the point where the nerve dies, is just like so horrific to me and I just, I can't imagine what pain that little girl was in and I just, I feel so awful for it. I feel absolutely, I just, I just wanna give her a hug, bless her, poor little thing. Like this might sound really extreme, but I do think there should be serious consequences for people who don't seek out actual healthcare for their kids and instead choose to use natural remedies instead. Now I know like the healthcare system in places like America is screwed up and not every parent can afford to get the treatment their kids need, that's different. That's the problem with the healthcare system, not the parent. But the parents who can get their kids treatment and choose not to and instead go with these alternative methods, I just think it's horrific and I do think there should be some consequences for them. You wanna use alternative medicine on yourself, go ahead. Yeah, I'll be a bit judgy, but there's nothing I can do about it. But the minute you start doing that on kids who don't have a choice, I just think you're completely out of line. But while we're on the subject of horrific things happening to teeth, we have this person who recalls an incident of tooth whitening with a bleach slash baking soda mix, repeatedly. The teeth were white and chalky. You could crumble them with your fingers. God, I hate this so much. This actually makes me want to vomit a little bit. Like, legitimately, one of my worst fears is losing my teeth because I have so many problems with my teeth anyway. I have literal dreams about my teeth falling out and like nightmares and I wake up in tears and it's just a nightmare. So this idea of your teeth just crumbling and being chalky just, oh, messes with me so much. I cannot stand this at all. I can't believe this actually needs to be said, but keep bleach away from your body. Don't drink it. Don't spill it around your mouth. Don't rub it onto your skin. Don't inject it. Nothing. No bleach. Stop. 
And while we're on the subject of sticking things in your mouth, as well as not sticking bleach in there, please also don't stick super glue in there. That is also awful. This person says, dentist here, patient had a ceramic crown fall off their tooth. Instead of coming in to see me to re-cement it, which is very easy to do, they use super glue themselves. Don't do that, please. The body does not like super glue. This reminds me so much of the woman who was on that program, Embarrassing Bodies, where she was so embarrassed to have some false teeth put in that she would just super glue her like actual tooth that had fallen out back into the front of her mouth. And she ended up having this like huge wad of dried super glue just kind of like on her teeth and gums and like just stuck in the front of her mouth and it caused even more damage and it looked even worse. I don't know if I'm allowed to put the clip in here but if I can get around it with like copyright stuff and use it as fair use then I will insert it here so you can get an idea of what I mean. This will be the first time Angela's let a dentist see inside her mouth for a decade. Angela's been keeping a secret she's ashamed to share with anyone. I have one at the front that has fallen out. How did you get it back in? I'm afraid I've been gluing it back in. How have you been doing that? I just, when it comes comes out, I just put a little bit of glue and try and hold it in place to keep it so I don't have a gap in my teeth. Angela's front teeth are coated in a thick layer of plaque and super glue. It's a result of years of desperation that go as far back as her childhood. These stories here are exactly why we need to reduce the stigma around certain medical treatments. There's nothing embarrassing about having to get some false teeth put in. There's nothing embarrassing about having to have some crowns or replacements or whatever like that. You should never feel embarrassed about doing something for your health. Well, that said though, like I understand the woman who was just like putting it back in instead of going to the dentist because I am also terrified of the dentist. And that's why I think we maybe need to help people with their fear over stuff like that. But I've no idea how to do it because I'm also terrified of the dentist. I still take my little lullaby with me, my little lamb, every time I go to the dentist and I cry a lot. It's bad. You wouldn't think I'm a nearly 30 year old woman. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, let's move away from teeth, thankfully. <sighs> Back into the world of what was even their logic here? And we have this story. Person stepped on a nail and instead of just pulling it out, he decided that he should just put his foot in milk for reasons. Pro tip, don't do that unless you want a serious infection. Bonus, different person with another puncture wound in their foot decided to put their foot in Listerine. Mm, at least he didn't have to worry about uh, much about an infection from doing so, but that had to hurt. Oh my god, that's horrific. No, no, no. But back to the milk one. Like, as far as I'm aware, there's no, like major myths or old wives tales about milk out there, like about it having antibacterial properties or something, so I don't get where that came from. I don't get his logic here. I don't get what he was even thinking. I'm just confused. The comment on this just grosses me out even more though. One of my kids stepped on a nail while wearing foam flip-flops. Apparently flip-flops make the whole thing worse because they're covered in bacteria and when the nail went through it, pushed that it pushed that bacteria into his foot. Ended up on antibiotics for two weeks. He had his siblings pushing him around in a wheelbarrow so he wouldn't have to walk. <laughs> I mean, the last bit's adorable, but the rest of it. No, I thought I couldn't hate flip-flops anymore, but here we are. I mean, I guess it just made me realize like how close we come to potential danger every day walking around. Like if you wear flip-flops, you're essentially barefooted next to just a thin piece of dirt and bacteria covered foam. And just, I, mm, no, no, gross. No, no thank you, mm -mm. At least those people had a little more sense than this next person though, who says, one guy thought if he applied some dirt on the wound, it would suffocate the bacteria and wouldn't get infected. This is why we need basic biology lessons for all. This guy is missing the fundamentals of, I guess just germ theory really, isn't he? You need education so one, you know dirt is full of bacteria and two, so you know you can't suffocate suffocate bacteria with dirt because one, it's not exactly airtight, and two, lots of different types of bacteria can respire anaerobically, so that's not gonna work, buddy. Like I say, there's just a lot of basic biology here, which is just bad. And our final comment is one which will make all of us with vaginas cringe and want to claw out our insides. Or maybe that's just me. My sister is an OR nurse and apparently putting garlic in your vagina doesn't get rid of bladder infections, but apparently a lot of women try it. She's had seven in the last four years. So firstly, I will never not be shocked by the amount of people who don't understand that the vagina and the urethra are completely 
different things. They are separate openings. You can't fix something in your urethra by shoving something up your vagina. They're not the same thing. And secondly, why garlic? And thirdly, please stop shoving foreign objects, particularly food and things that can rot up your vagina. That's never, ever, ever, ever gonna end well. Trust me. Wait, no, I said it like I've done it myself. I've not done it myself, but I have the common sense to know not to do that. Just please don't. I don't know who is perpetuating this vagina garlic myth, but please stop. And if you know someone who's spreading this myth and telling people to do this, please tell them to stop. And on that lovely note, that is where we are ending things today. I hope you enjoyed this completely repulsive video. <laughs> um, as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic, and if you have any stories of your own, please feel free to add them down in the comments as well, because they would always be entertaining and educational to hear. Plus, to help with engagement, please uh, don't forget to like the video if you did like it, and also subscribe if you're new here or if you've just been unsubscribed, because I'm really close to a quarter of a million now, and it would be really, really nice to make it soon. So I appreciate you all a hell of a lot. Thank you so, so much for watching today. If you'd like to help support my work, you can do it over on Patreon. Um, I've just kind of like revamped the tiers a little bit, so they're all named after Kyra now, and they're adorable little Kyra photos. So you can join one of the Kyra teams. You can be part of Team Bean, or Team Pickle, or Team Kubi, or any of the others. It's really, really cute. You can also get access to like video notes and script notes, extra photos. Uh, there's a Discord server you can join, and if you join one of the higher tiers as well, you get exclusive stickers or mini prints, or you can get some large 12 by 18 poster prints sent out to you every three months as well. It's really, really fun, and I really love it, and I really enjoyed putting together the little, little like, art packs you can get for the higher tiers, and uh, yeah, like, there's absolutely no pressure to support me if you can't, obviously, you need to put yourself first, that's always important, and look after yourself and your families, but um, if you can and you want to, then I always really, really appreciate it, but it's all good, no pressure, sorry. Anyway, I'm so bad at self-promotion, I think that's everything, but for now, thank you for watching, I appreciate you guys a hell of a lot, and I'll see you really, really soon.